Assalamualaikum everyone. Welcome back. So this is lecture 2 with the title Clean Room. In the first lecture, we already see what is uh, micro manufacturing uh, processes or micro manufacturing technology. Now, what is micro engineering? So since we are we want to produce the uh, micro product, so we need the micro engineering. The micro engineering are the technologies and the practice in order to make the uh, the structure which is the 2D whether it's 2D, 2.5D or 3D and these devices um, must function with the dimension uh, of micrometers. These technologies were divided into two technologies which are microelectronics where it involves producing electronic circuitry and silicon chips. So this process and technology is a very well developed uh, technology. Uh, and another one is micro machining. Uh, it involves in producing the structures and moving part of the micro engineered devices. So the goal of the micro engineering is um, integration of the micro electronic circuitry and micro machine structure in order for us to uh, produce the micro system technology, which is the MST, or it can also known by the micro electro mechanical system MEMS. So the advantage of the micro engineering is uh, they are small size, low cost, high reliability and also versatile application. This micro engineering technology uh, will require a specific working environment. Okay, so since the part that we want to produce in micro engineering technology is uh, it's super small, therefore the environment must be super clean and uh, it also requires special clothes and also the environment um, where the dust and particle in the air must also be controlled. This is showing uh, one of the example um, of the micro product. So if you can see here, it is um, uh, what we call a GPS uh, that developed by Hitachi. They measured around uh, 0 0.15 times 0 0.15 mm. Uh, it is very small. If you can see, uh, this is this is the the. If you put it on the finger, it is just like a dot, like a mole only, right? Okay. So sometimes it is called also sm uh, smart dust uh, because it can spray on us, absorb or taken in the food, drinks, and even injected. Okay. So this is showing how small is the product that produced via the uh, micro engineering technology. So that's why we must be very careful with the environment to produce this part because the product itself is very small. So meaning that it cannot be mixed with the dust and everything and other particles. Due to that, we need clean room. So what is clean room? Uh, clean room, we can define it as an area where the airborne particulates can be monitored and controlled. Okay, so that um, we know the size of particle uh, does not exceed the specified concentration and therefore we can also eliminate potential dysfunction of machine uh, processes and product. Over the years, um, the size of the IC features um, is already being uh, reduced tremendously. If you can see here, in uh, 1970s, uh, the size of the uh, the product is more into the 10 micrometer or something. And then moving into 2000, it goes beyond the size of um, the virus. Okay, So that's why we need to process the IC uh, in, the ca uh, in, the, in the clean room. So this clean room is more like a hospital operation theater rather than the production factory. Now we, we're going to look into some pictures on how the clean room uh, clean room look like. So here are some examples of the clean room and how the workers working in the clean room. So if you can see they are uh, wearing special uh, clothes in this clean room area. Okay, and then they are moving in a way that um, cannot be uh, producing more dust and everything. So the clothes is designed particularly not to um, create more um, dust or contaminant in the clean room. So why do we need clean room in uh, micro engineering? So the purpose uh, are for the control of the environment. 
So one is because um, we want to limit the presence of the submicron particle, uh, which is the contaminant. So that, as I mentioned previously in the product, like the Hitachi uh, GPS, that, that one is like uh, 0.15 mm. So the dust itself can uh, damage the product if um, there are a lot of dust and contaminant in the in the area, right? So even the product itself is very small, so we want to limit the uh, particles and contaminant uh, in the product. Okay. So another one is uh, uh, for us to um, uh, control the environmental condition. For example, the temperature, the humidity. Uh, if uh, we have the clean room, we will be able to um, uh, control the temperature, how much is temperature is suitable for the manufacturing of the uh, micro product and what is the humidity because humidity also can affect the product because humidity is involved the uh, vapor, the, the water in the, um, in the uh, air, right? So that one can also... Um, uh, affect the quality of the product we want to produce in the microengineering. So the level of which the environment is controlled is what uh, separate one clean room from the others. This is the general info uh, about the clean room. Typically, the, re uh, the clean room will be air conditioned. Uh, the temperature will be around 25 degrees Celsius and around 45% uh, relative humidity. So this one is depending on the clean room uh, uh, itself also and also the function. Sometimes the temperature can be varied and also the humidity also can be varied. But the commonly, it is uh, 21 degrees Celsius uh, to 45% uh, percent relative humidity. So clean room uh, contaminant free. Okay. So where um, we are going to use high tech manufacturing and assembly. Uh, uh, where this this process will take place. Okay. Now, uh, let us see some fundamental rules uh, that apply to the clean room. First, the first thing is, um, contaminant must not be introduced into the control environment from the outside. Meaning that all uh, people that coming inside or uh, whatever the devices that we take into the clean room must be contaminant free. Okay. So it has to be uh, clean first before. Uh, we go into the clean room. Even uh, people also will need uh, will require to uh, to wear the uh, what we call the um, uh, special clothes so that we didn't bring um, dust into uh, or contaminant into the clean room. Second, the apparatus or equipment with uh, the control environment must not generate uh, the contaminant. For example, uh, the the friction or chemical reaction between the uh, uh, the apparatus or the chemical that we use inside the clean room must not create additional contaminant. Okay, and then the third one, contaminant must not be allowed to accumulate in the control environment. So I'm going to show you uh, how they uh, control this accumulation of the contaminant in the uh, room uh, later. Okay, and the fourth one. Uh, Existing contaminant must be eliminated. So meaning that if there are um, accumulated um, uh, contaminant inside the clean room, they must be eliminated rapidly Okay, from the clean room. So the clean room is, uh, is uh, classified into class. Okay, So there are class of uh, clean room. So this is a number where it's used to indicate the quantity of particle of size 0 0.5 micrometer or bigger in the cubic feet of air. Okay. So for example, a class 100 clean room, it has to maintain the uh, count of particle of size 0 0.5 micrometer or bigger that less than uh, 100 uh, per foot uh, cube. Okay. So it has to maintain this um, number uh, throughout the processes, okay, so it has to be um, 100 uh, over feet uh, cube. Now, let us look into the clean room classification. If you can see here, uh, the smaller the class, meaning uh, the, the, the less um, particle size uh, and also the number of the particles uh, per uh, foot, is uh, allowed in, in, the, in the area. So, for example, class 1, 
the maximum number of the particle that uh, accepted is only 35 with the size is uh, more or less uh, like um, below 10 okay so it's uh, more or less like 1.5 from something uh, micrometer and then it goes to class 10 so the maximum is goes to 350 particles per uh, foot foot cube uh, with the size of the particle um, like uh, over here maybe five or six something like that okay and then uh, goes to uh, class 100 and then class 1000 and class 10,000 okay so this is uh, the line we're showing the dust count of the ordinary room te uh, room air now let us look into the classes and their uh, typical uses so for a class 1 to 10 meaning that um, the lowest one meaning that uh, the most clean uh, room this one is used uh, for production laboratories for electronic integrated circuits. So this is the one that we are going to uh, look into the process. Okay, And then class 100 is production areas for photo lab, medical implants and everything. And for class 10,000, usually in production of the TV tubes, hospital operating theaters um, and class 100,000 in production of the ball bearing. SO created the classification scheme for this clean room. So the equation is given by Cn equal to 10 power of n uh, times 0 0.1 over d with the power 2.08. So see, let us see the equation here. So Cn will be the number, uh, maximum number of the concentration of particle per meter cube. So since it is ISO, so it's using the meter cube instead of the feet cube. Okay. So, with the diameter equal to or larger than the considered particle diameter. So, N is ISO classification number. I'm going to show you the table uh, in the next uh, uh, slide later. And D is the particle diameter. So, this is the D, the particle diameter. And 0 0.1 is the constant. Okay. So, this is how they calculate the maximum number concentration for the particles per meter cube. Now, this is the timetable for the ISO class, okay? So, for the ISO uh, class here, like uh, class 1, class 2, until class 9, so they also divided by the uh, particle size here. Uh, if you can remember the time, uh, the table that showing uh, previously, okay? So, uh, this is how, uh, what is the limit of the particle that can be allowed in this uh, uh, class 1, let's say for example, class 1, uh, the maximum allowable is 10 uh, particles only with the size uh, less than 0 0.1 micrometer. Okay, so this is the highest uh, limit for the ISO, ISO class 1. So if you go to class 2, it is uh, uh, larger in size. Uh, but let's say if you can see the size when uh, it goes to the particles, it going down. Okay. So that's how they uh, produce the ISO scheme uh, classification scheme.